None of the talks today have changed your lives, have they? Keynote speakers don't usually change people's lives, but as I understand, most of you develop chatbots. One way or another, you're chatbot developers. And, and as such, not sorry, not sorry. And as such, I think uh, what I'm going to say is going to interest you. It's going to affect your lives. But let me s start from the beginning. 20 years ago, I sold all my high-tech holdings companies in order to dedicate the rest of my life for my passion, which I thought was artificial intelligence. Just as a 15-second uh, memory, let me show you a clip from 15 years ago, or 20 years ago. Can you show the clip, please? The video? Jack Dunitz, a high-tech entrepreneur, believes that the time has come for this idea to materialize. Artificial intelligence is granting machines the ability to speak like humans. As simple as that. Okay, 20 years ago, I sold my high-tech holdings and verged on this present adventure that I'm still on. For 20 years, I've been developing chatbots. And this is how I started, what you saw just now. Um, I believed back then, I'm a veteran of the Technion. and I graduated the Technion in the 70s, and when, and when I went to school, artificial intelligence was defined, was still defined, by someone called Alan Turing. Everybody related to Alan Turing when they said artificial intelligence. It meant being able to use natural language in a way undistinguishable from a human. Not solving uh, differential equations, not uh, uh, doing a ton of uh, data mining and deep learning. It's just using language like humans do. And you all know computer from Star Trek or data from Star Wars or all these uh, uh, entities that could speak and ha they had a human-like ability to hold a conversation. So I set up to do that. And I started developing chatbots and deployed them from, I think, 2001. I accumulated until recently about a total of four million conversations. Not for profit. It was all a trial and error and a more and more experience gained in the field of chatbots. Throughout this time, I, I was sure back then, together with Ray Kurzweil and other futurists, that in a matter of 10 years, we're going to have speaking entities speaking with us. And 10 years seemed like a very good time uh, taking into account the speed with which other fields have progressed. If you look at deep learning, uh, big data, neural networks, everything was, went there. And I slowly realized that people are using the term artificial intelligence in a very broad term. The field I found myself in was chatbots. Chatbots was treated as a game, children's game. I was once invited, I think it was 2011, to a conference It was held in, uh, in Jerusalem. There were four people on the panel. It was myself, it was Professor Tali Tishbi, Professor Idan Segev, the two prominent researchers uh, from uh, cognitive sciences, brain research, computer science, and one science journalist. And there was a panel, and each presented his, what he had to say about, uh, about artificial intelligence. But I brought a demo. I brought one of my best bots back then, it was 2011, and my part of the presentation at the panel, I didn't say anything, I just had a conversation with the bot, and the people in the crowd were offering the questions, so I didn't really script it. It was a good bot, it was very impressive, and everybody was clapping, nobody ex was expecting uh, entertainment in this panel, and the two professors jumped all over me. They said, this is, a, this is cheating, this is child play, this is scripting, it's pattern matching, it's not science, it's not technology. 
It's not the real stuff. And let me tell you, I've been in chatbots, I've been doing it 20 years. Only very recently, the people understood, and still today, some of the speakers here are refraining from using the term chatbots. They use artificial intelligence, or they use conversational technology. They don't say chatbots. I, in the, back in 1999, when I hired my first staff, my chief scientist was a dude from Australia, from Perth University, who as a graduate student won the 1997 Lobner Turing Contest. I don't know if any of you know what the Lobner Contest is. It's a contest of chatbots. It's been going on for 20 years now. He was the winner of the 1987 competition. And that qualified him, in my, in my eyes, to be my chief scientist. He was a mathematician. He knew his, his job, but he, he was a kid. He was the most relevant person I could find in the world to develop bots. And throughout the years that passed have since, no, 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 five minutes. You have to add the, the Hebrew part at the beginning. <laughs> so what happened instead, instead of this really positive and optimistic uh, prediction I had, nothing happened. The state of chatbots, to this day, I think, is pathetic. Look what's going on in all other fields. Every three, four years, a new generation of people like you comes, develops chatbots, and then moves on to more serious stuff. Okay, I've talked to many, many people here. Everybody has a chatbot. Everybody uses their own tools. There's no real community. This is the first attempt to make some community. It's totally crazy. It's really pathetic. The state of the art of chatbots is pathetic because there is no reason there's no technological reason for machines to speak exactly like us today. And you know why it doesn't happen? I will tell you why. When I went to school, I learned a programming language called Algol. I don't think anyone of you know it. It was very modern. Why was it modern back in 1969, 70? Because it was modular. It employed something called modular programming. Did you hear about code, code reuse? You could develop code and then use it again. Wonderful. You create a concept like an object, you know, like an oriented object. You know, code should be reused. We have been developing chatbots for 20 years. Nobody used code or a chatbot. There's no market, there's no standards, there's no tool set, there's no language. You should have thought by now there'll be programming language to deal with chatbots. A language. Middleware. Something. There's nothing. Everybody develops, everybody's talking about the importance, but nothing really happens. Why can't I develop something which I'm very good at, a small conversation, package it, and have, it, and have everyone use it? Like a JavaScript object, for example. The fact that we cannot pack micro conversation and resell them and reuse them with a clear API, with a standard API, is ridiculous. Really is. Look, every conversation, why doesn't anyone create a good chatbot? Anyone, Siri is lousy, Alexa is lousy. They are lousy because they are all flat. They cannot go into a conversation. One-liners, one question, maybe a follow-up question, that's it. They cannot really talk, go into a conversation. The reason is, to go in, you need special expertise in that. So you could sell a component of a very good expertise in something, and then everybody could use it. With the right API, of course. My point is this. There, is, there should be a huge supply of micro-conversations that you, bot developers, could draw from and take. OK, this takes the name. This takes the address. This makes a payment. You just pick, pick and order them up. A marketplace of, of natural language conversation components, each of them handling a few sentences only. Picture a marketplace with 20,000 different micro-conversations, each being perfect in what it does, and people just taking and using it. It happens in every other area of programming. There's, there's libraries, there's methods, there's, here we have nothing. So, I, I promise to you I will change your lives. It's working. 
It's working. You can do two things. You don't have to port code. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is if you have a small chatbot that is perfect, package it. We tell you how. It's very easy. OK? And say you're ready. You will get requests. And your component will send back. It will handle the conversation until it ends, the four, five, six turns. Control goes back to the calling bot. And then it go on to, can go on to another component. Now, you don't have to change the way you develop. You keep the code. You keep the source. You keep everything. It's all software as a service. So when you buy a component or you use a component that someone else developed, you just hook up to it. You start sending it inputs, receive responses. You can filter the responses and use these responses for your user. You don't have to be an expert in every single micro conversation that the user insists on holding. So it's working. You can see it. You will see it in the open plaza. Uh, wait, wait, I have something for you here. Okay, so there's one, there's one show going on in the, at the plaza. We have a stand there, and you can join today. It's working. Try it. You like it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.